Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video because I'm actually using my favorite balayage technique on one of my stylists that's here in the salon with me. This is Stephanie, and as you guys can see, she has the most gorgeous red hair. I am absolutely obsessed with her natural color, so I'm going to brighten her up today, give her a nice, bright, kind of halo money piece effect, and I cannot wait to show you how I do that. So if you're interested, then let's go ahead and get started in today's video. So for today's lightener, I was actually influenced by Stu and Jesse to use the Goldwell OxyCure Lightener, and I'm actually using 10 volume just because I am a slow balayage slash foiler. So I'm going to use that to start off with and then I'm moving up to 20 volume as we go up the head and of course mixing up Olaplex with that. To start my favorite balayage technique, I'm going to go in with two foils on this horizontal section of her neck and they're actually just going to be baby lights and I do end up teasing these baby lights right here just because you guys will see that I go heavier with the blonde in the front and then just do less blonde in the back. So along with the hairline, I do want to make it pretty heavy towards the front and then kind of diffuse it towards the back. So you guys will see that these two little highlights that I do or baby lights that I do um, are just a little bit diffused right where the roots meet the blonde. <laughs> broken and one is split because I have seen you fall apart I have no rules apart to play I didn't have anything to say so for the side hairline foils on the back of her head I'm going to do one little baby light that's not teased and then right on top of that one I'm going to do another baby light and just tease that one and feather it up a little bit more so this technique is obviously customizable to any of your guys' needs for the client. So if your client wants a very bright hairline all around, then obviously you can add a couple more foils and you can make them either a little bit thicker or you can do a lot more back to back. It's completely up to you and it is fully customizable. Now don't forget the top of the ear whenever you are doing a hairline. I feel like as stylists we tend to forget this area and neglect it. And then once the client wears their hair up, it's just a big chunk right there. So make sure you're putting at least one or two foils. I'm only doing one on her and I'm not teasing it at all. So now that we are at the front of her hair, I'm doing two little baby lights back to back. And then on the third baby light, I'm going to do it a little bit closer to the root, but not as close as the first two. So those first two went right up to the root, and the third one is actually going to be teased out just a little bit and then feathered up. Just to give that really nice kind of diffused look as it gets really bold and bright near the front, and then it diffuses its way to the back. So once I've repeated those same steps on the other side of the hairline, I'm actually going to do a little custom foil right here on the left and right side on the top section. So as you guys can see, she has just a little bit of a curve right there. And I like to fully customize this to the client's needs and their hairline. So if your client has like a widow's peak, then obviously you're going to do it two kind of pointed sections into each other. If someone just has a straight horizontal hairline that doesn't have any type of like 
you know, widow's peak or anything like that, then you're just going to do it straight across foil. But for her, I wanted to make sure to kind of get every single little hair around her hairline because she wanted to make it so bold. And sometimes these little pockets of hairs right here, we tend to forget them. And then it's just like really, really in your face when the client pulls their hair back. And it's just like a chunk of darkness right there. And nobody wants that. So just make sure whenever you guys are doing the hairline to really take your time and kind of focus in and see right where the client is parting their hair and how their hairline actually naturally flows because not all hairlines are created equal and you are really going to stand out as a stylist to that client if you get that perfect hairline because that's what they see first that's what everyone sees first and that'll really determine how they feel about their overall hair all right so now moving on to my favorite part of a foliage or a balayage which is the money piece because this is a piece that will stand out the most It'll make the color what it is. So for today's technique, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two foils back to back. They're going to be baby lights and they are not going to be teased out at all. So two regular foils just back to back and they're going to go all the way up to the scalp. And then I'm going to follow it with two other foils back to back on top of that. But those two, I'm actually going to tease out a little bit and kind of feather my lightener up towards the scalp but not go directly onto the scalp. Now what that's going to do is transition the money piece from blonder in the front to a little bit more soft and rooted towards the back of her hair. And that's what's actually going to help blend out the bright face framing pieces to the back and kind of connect it all together. Moving on to the sides of her head and as you guys can see I actually changed to a teasing comb. Now this is something that I haven't seen a lot of stylists do and my stylist Stephanie actually taught me this and I actually really love using these while teasing because A it gives you a really nice tease but B I feel like it's a little bit more of a gentle tease and it's a lot easier to get through um, and kind of comb out whenever you are in the shampoo bowl. It doesn't get as knotted. It's almost like it's a tease that's on top of the hair rather than like in the hair, if that makes sense. I don't really know how to word it, but you guys should definitely try it out and let me know what you think. But anyways... As I'm moving my way up the sides of her head, I'm going to be doing medium weaves and each weave that I do, I'm going to tease it out and I'm going to put the lightener on a full saturation on the ends of her hair and then kind of feather my way up to where that teasing is. I don't want any of these foils to be all the way up to her scalp or anything, so I do definitely want to have that natural rooted area where I feather it up. And while I'm working my way up, I'm actually going to be 
kind of decreasing the amount of foils that I use on the sides of her head. So because this is closer to her front and like her hairline area, I am going to be doing the foils a little bit closer together. And then you'll see that I start to take kind of thicker chunks of her natural and leaving those areas out just to create that natural depth. Sometimes less is more and you guys will definitely see that when I do the back of her head next. Um, just because she does still want to have a good amount of her natural and still feel like a redhead while at the same time having those pops of blonde. So I am leaving it blonder in the front and kind of giving her that natural depth and dimension throughout. <laughs> On this back section, you guys will notice that I left a big chunk of her natural hair in between the hairline foils and this next foil that I'm starting to do. And the reason being is because I do want that depth and that pocket of darkness in order to make the blonde pieces stand out a little bit more back there. So the front's gonna be really, really bright and blonde and it's just going to gradually fade to this beautiful kind of sun-kissed natural balayage back here. So I am only going to do about five or six foils in this back section, and I'm just going to repeat the exact same steps that I've been doing just in the back here. Anything to say, follow your heart, don't overtake it, if you leave it behind, someone will break it. I left you my heart, what did you do? You used it then abused it. You left me all shot and sad. Was my love untrue? Was it that bad? You have no answers in life. Don't know without you, how will I survive? So now that I've reached the top mohawk section, I'm going to continue doing my weaving technique that I was doing before and teasing it out, except now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting the lightener a little bit closer up to her scalp, not all the way up to the scalp, but just a little bit closer. So it gives that nice bright kind of touched up effect on the top half of her hair, except what I'm going to be doing is, this is gonna be a little complicated to explain, but I'm going to be starting off with the same exact hair between the foils as I was doing in the back section. So leaving a decent amount in between. And then as we transition going forward with these foils, I'm going to start putting a little bit less hair in between the foils, if that makes sense. So just going from like really dimensional in the back to a little bit less dimension in the front. So she feels the brightest in the front, 
and then still has that nice depth in the back. I'm, I feel like that's so complicated to explain, but just as you move your way forward, add more foils. Okay, period. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. That was a lot easier. So now that I have her in the shampoo bowl and her color is rinsed out, I did apply Olaplex number two. And while it's sitting in there, I like to use it as a detangling kind of product. So it helps get through the hair a lot easier. And I wanted to show you guys the brush that I'm using. This is from Olivia Garden and it's called the Eye Blend Brush. And I use it for shadow roots. So as soon as I apply a shadow root, I'll typically melt it in using this brush. But it's also amazing for detangling. I don't know what it is about it. The bristles are just amazing for getting through the hair. So I just wanted to show you how easy I get through her hair with this brush right here. So for her all over toner, I mixed up one ounce of 10VG and one ounce of 9NW from Redken Shade DQ using the regular liquid processing solution. And I didn't record me mixing up the shadow root, but I did use the 7N from Redken Shade DQ as well and just use the thicker processing solution. So I wanted to use a little bit more of a controlled golden toner. And what I mean by controlled is by adding the neutrals and the violet pigment in there, but also the warm golden pigments in there. So that way it doesn't go too neutral, but it doesn't go too warm either. And I feel like that really complemented her natural color as well. And I didn't try and counteract it with an ash color. So you guys can see right here while I'm curling her hair, I'm so happy that I actually recorded this portion right here, but her hair is straight and you guys can see just how beautiful that blend is and that depth towards the back of her hair and that really nice bright pop of blonde towards the front and the underneath of her hair. I absolutely love how this color turned out and I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Let me know if you guys wanna see anything else and if so, give any specific recommendations on what you guys would like to see. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my channel and I hope to see you all in my next one. Bye guys, have a great day. Was it dark about? You have no answers in life Don't know without you How will I survive?